Look into a mirror if you have green eyes. You're staring at a genetic accident that rewrote the rules of human evolution. Picture the rolling hills of County Kerry, Ireland, where morning mist clings to ancient stone walls and the scent of peat smoke drifts across emerald fields. Walk through any village here and you'll see them, eyes the color of deep forest pools, catching light like polished jade. Green eyes exist in less than 2% of all humans on Earth, while brown eyes dominate 70 to 80% of the global population and blue eyes claim another 8 to 10%. Green eyes exist in a category entirely their own that defies every rule of genetics. Inside your iris, there's no actual green pigment at all. What you're seeing is an optical illusion created by very little melanin, combined with a unique scattering of light through your eye tissue. The entire phenomenon hinges on one tiny change in your genetic code, what scientists call a single nucleotide polymorphism. The main genes involved are OCA2 and HARC2, both sitting on chromosome 15 like master switches that normally control melanin production. In green-eyed people, specific mutations in these genes reduce melanin production while allowing light to scatter through the iris in ways that create the green appearance. Up to 16 different genes interact in complex ways to create green eyes, making them nearly impossible to predict even with advanced genetic testing. Each green-eyed person represents a unique combination where dozens of variants had to align in precisely the right way. Low melanin levels create the foundation, but specialized light scattering in the iris stroma creates an optical illusion of green pigment that doesn't actually exist. No two green-eyed individuals reach their eye color through identical pathways. Unlike brown eyes that offer protection from UV radiation, or blue eyes that may provide advantages in low light conditions. Green eyes serve no clear survival function, yet persist across populations. To understand how this impossible trait emerged, we need to travel back through time to the very foundations of European genetics. The story begins 40,000 years ago in the limestone caves of Somerset, where ancient remains reveal the earliest genetic building blocks for what would eventually become green eyes. A female skeleton from this Paleolithic site dating to around 15,000 years ago carried mitochondrial DNA U8A, a genetic signature found throughout the Magdalenian culture that stretched across Ice Age Europe. Later, the famous Cheddar Man, whose 10,000-year-old bones were discovered in Somerset's limestone caves, represents the Western hunter-gatherer populations that carried early variants contributing to green eyes. Recent genetic analysis reveals Cheddar Man probably had blue or green eyes, lactose intolerance, dark hair, and very dark skin, a combination that challenges our assumptions about ancient Europeans. These early populations faced extreme challenges during the brutal last glacial maximum 20,000 years ago, when small hunter-gatherer bands survived in scattered refugia across southern Europe. Their isolation accidentally preserved rare variants through genetic drift. As the climate warmed and ice sheets retreated, these groups carried their unique DNA combinations northward into Britain and Ireland, setting the stage for the next chapter in the Green Eye story. Around 8,000 years ago, this ancient genetic landscape would collide dramatically with newcomers sailing from the eastern Mediterranean. These early European farmers, who had developed agriculture at sites like Tatalhoyuk in modern Turkey, carried their own distinct pigmentation profiles. Archaeological evidence from sites like Durrington Walls near Stonehenge reveals extensive intermarriage between the incoming farmers and existing hunter-gatherers. Burial sites across Britain show individuals with mixed ancestry, their grave goods reflecting cultural fusion alongside genetic mixing. The collision between early European farmer ancestry, Western hunter-gatherer lineages, and later migrations produced novel gene interactions that enabled green eyes to emerge. At sites like the Ness of Brodgar in Orkney, excavated Neolithic structures reveal a society where different populations lived and worked together. 
creating the hereditary foundation for complex eye colors. Regional variation developed based on different mixing ratios, different areas with higher hunter-gatherer ancestry versus farmer ancestry, evolved different frequencies of light eyes, explaining the geographic patterns we see today. This genetic foundation was crucial, but the transformation that would truly enable green eyes required an even more dramatic revolution. These kinds of groundbreaking discoveries about how ancient populations shaped our modern traits are exactly what Ancestry Code is all about, connecting you to the surprising DNA truths buried in our shared past. Hit that subscribe button to join us on more adventures through the hidden connections that link ancient DNA to modern life. Now, on to the video. Around 4,500 years ago, the Bell Beaker people swept across Europe from the Lower Rhine region, carrying unprecedented concentrations of light pigmentation variants that would prove crucial for green eye development. The Amesbury Archer, discovered near Stonehenge and dating to around 4,300 years ago, spent his childhood in the Alpine regions of Central Europe before traveling to Britain. Strontium isotope analysis of his teeth proves he made this 800-mile journey, carrying Alpine bell beaker genetics directly to the heart of prehistoric Britain. His burial contained the richest grave goods of any Bronze Age individual found in Britain. Copper knives, gold ornaments, stone wrist guards, and finely crafted pottery. This wasn't just migration. This was the arrival of a new hereditary aristocracy. Between 2400 and 2000 BCE, bell beaker migrations triggered a genetic revolution that fundamentally altered the eye color potential of European populations. In Britain, the transformation was complete. Modern populations show 90% ancestry from these Bronze Age newcomers, who carried specific genetic variants for reduced melanin production. At sites like Boscombe Down near Stonehenge, mass burial analysis reveals entire families of bell beaker origin, suggesting coordinated settlement rather than gradual infiltration. The Bronze Age had established the DNA toolkit for green eyes, but additional waves of migration would concentrate and distribute these variants across specific regions of Europe. 4,000 years ago, Riders from the Pontic Steppes brought additional biological complexity that established what researchers call the central aspects of the Irish genome. These Yamnaya-derived populations carried DNA signatures that persist unchanged in Irish populations today, forming part of the genetic foundation for Ireland's exceptionally high green eye frequencies. During the Iron Age, Celtic expansion through sustained gene flow across the English Channel concentrated green eye variants in specific regions and created the geographic patterns still visible in modern populations. At the hillfort of Danebury in Hampshire, excavated from 700 to 100 BCE, Celtic communities developed the sophisticated Latin culture while maintaining the genetic connections to continental populations that carried green eye variants. The Battersea Shield, recovered from the Thames and dating to around 350 BCE, represents the artistic flowering of these Celtic societies whose movement and settlement patterns distributed the hereditary foundation for green eyes across Ireland, Scotland and Wales, the regions where green eyes remain most common today. Later, Viking voyages from the 8th to 11th centuries CE would add another layer to this hereditary tapestry. These Norse seafarers amplified green eye frequencies through extensive settlement and intermarriage, particularly in Ireland and Scotland where green eyes reach their highest concentrations today. At Repton in Derbyshire, archaeologists discovered a Viking winter camp from 873 CE containing nearly 300 individuals. DNA analysis reveals these weren't just raiders, but settlers bringing families and establishing permanent communities that would contribute green eye variants to local populations. Norse genetics now appear as 16% ancestry in Scottish and Irish populations, with 3-4% to representation across all British Isles directly correlating with the regions showing the highest green eye frequencies in modern Europe. 
The longship burials at Salme, Estonia, dating to around 750 CE, show Viking warriors carrying Scandinavian ancestry as far east as the Baltic, creating networks that spanned continents and helped spread light-eye genetics beyond their original Nordic homeland. Even into medieval times, population movements continued to shape the distribution of green eye variants. Medieval population movements like the plantation of Ulster in the 1600s concentrated green eye genetics further. Between 1609 and 1690, systematic settlement brought 30,000 Scottish and English Protestants to Northern Ireland, creating the DNA similarity we see today between Northeastern Ireland and Southern Scotland, both regions showing exceptionally high green eye frequencies that reflect this shared genetic heritage. These migrations across thousands of years explain not only where green eyes are common today, but also how they managed to travel to the most unexpected places on Earth. The most remarkable evidence of this long-distance biological travel comes from a remote mountain village in western China. In the remote village of Likian, hidden in the mountains of Gansu province, China, two-thirds of the population have green eyes and blonde hair. This tiny community sits 4,000 miles from the nearest Green Eye Territory, yet DNA analysis reveals 65% Caucasian ancestry among the villagers. Local legends claim they descend from lost Roman soldiers, possibly from Marcus Crassus's defeated army after the Battle of Carre in 53 BCE. Chinese historical records from the Han Dynasty mention soldiers with distinctive appearance in the region though the connection remains historically debated. Modern DNA testing confirms 65% Caucasian ancestry among the villagers, supporting the possibility of ancient European genetic contributions in this remote location. This raises a fascinating evolutionary question. How did such a rare trait manage to survive and spread when natural selection typically eliminates genetic oddities? Natural selection usually eliminates rare traits, yet green eyes have persisted across millennia, despite offering no clear survival advantage. Founder effects amplified green eye frequencies in isolated populations when small groups carrying these variants established new settlements. When the Vikings established Iceland in 874 CE, a small founding population of several hundred settlers created the genetic foundation. Today, Iceland shows some of the world's highest green eye frequencies, around 14% overall, with higher rates among women because these founding families happened to carry the relevant variants. Genetic drift in small populations made rare traits common through random sampling during migration. The Norman conquest of Ireland in 1169 brought relatively few settlers, but their biological impact was amplified through intermarriage with existing populations already carrying green eye variants, concentrating the trait in Irish bloodlines. Modern population studies reveal the fragility of this remarkable trait. Climate change, warfare or disease could easily eliminate entire green-eyed populations, making current carriers living biological treasures. Understanding this fragility helps explain why green eyes became so deeply embedded in human culture and memory. Irish medieval texts frequently describe supernatural beings and heroic figures with distinctive eye colors potentially preserving cultural memory of population mixing between different ancestral groups. Medieval persecution records specifically mention unusual physical features, including eye colors, as potential signs of witchcraft, creating selective pressure that may have concentrated these traits in surviving populations. Yet beyond these cultural factors, the most powerful force ensuring green eye survival was reproductive selection based on attraction. Modern surveys of 66,000 people ranked green eyes as the most attractive eye color, with men consistently ranking them as most beautiful and women placing them third after gray and blue. This pattern of attraction likely operated throughout history ensuring that individuals with green eyes had reproductive advantages that allowed the trait to persist and spread despite genetic odds. Your green eyes connect you directly to the Bell Beaker people who transformed Bronze Age Europe, the Celtic societies who shaped Iron Age culture, 
and the Viking seafarers who established trade networks spanning continents. Green eyes persist as an evolutionary anomaly that defied extinction through a combination of drift, founder effects, and consistent human preference across millennia. If this discovery amazed you, wait until you see what we uncover next about ancient migrations that rewrote entire continents and left their genetic signatures scattered across the globe. This was Ancestry Code, and as always, thanks for watching.